So the other day I made a video about Nintendo and how it seems like they're able to get away with a lot of things that other companies would not get away with. And I, I listed several examples. I listed the example of the paid online. I talked about their games costing so much, them making false copyright claims against YouTubers and content creators. And I was pretty much saying, like, if, if Sony and Microsoft did any of the shit that Nintendo does, there would be so much more outrage than Nintendo doing the exact same thing. Obviously, Sony and Microsoft both have paid online, but at least you don't have to use a goddamn phone app to do voice chat. Like, they, they charge you money to play games online. You don't even have all the features. If you want to transfer your Pokemon data, for example, you have to pay another $16 a year. But when it comes to awful business practices that Nintendo has done, I mean, that video didn't even scratch the surface. I just made a, a broader point that Nintendo seems to have a lot more clout and prestige, and they're able to use that because of the, all the innovations that they made in the video game industry and all the, the favorite childhood memories that people have with Nintendo. They seem to get away with a lot more than, it, than if they were some other company. One example of this that I can think of, of something that's clearly an awful thing, but people seem to have absolutely no problem with it. Like, it doesn't even bat an eye. All these commentators on YouTube, all these people that talk about everything EA does and Activision and all the anti-consumer things that go on seem to have had no problem when Nintendo would release these new consoles, like the new 3DS, that would lock certain features and some games to that new 3DS. So if you were an early adopter, Nintendo pretty much told you to go fuck yourself. But people seem okay with this type of business practice, so much so that you had so many people that were begging for Nintendo to release an upgraded model of the Nintendo Switch similar to the new 3DS back in 2014. I just don't understand why so many people have no problem with Nintendo screwing over people who bought the original console. They did it with the new 3DS, nobody gave a shit, and people want this, people want this to happen with a Nintendo Switch. I just do not understand this, okay? so. Nintendo recently confirmed that they have no plans to make a new version of the Nintendo Switch console. They want to focus on their Switch Lite and the original Switch. That's what they got for now. And hopefully they keep it at that. We really don't need another Nintendo Switch model. The Nintendo Switch is the Nintendo Switch. You got the Switch Lite, which is great if you want a more handheld experience. But if you want what you got out of the Switch experience, which is... The, the hybrid experience, then the original Switch is all you need. We do not need another model for the Nintendo Switch, especially a more powerful version of the Nintendo Switch. That's like putting lipstick on a pig. Like, it, it makes no sense to, to market the, a new Nintendo Switch as a more powerful version to what? Try to make it feel like a more modern platform? Look, the Nintendo Switch platform can never graphically compete with the PlayStation 5 and the next generation Xbox. It's just, it just can't happen. It can't even compete with the current gen consoles, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. You have games that run great on those consoles, but struggle to run the Switch. So upgrading a Switch to make it feel like it could potentially compete with the PS5, no, it can never compete. Graphically speaking, it could never compete. So making a Switch Pro a more powerful version of the original Switch, what exactly is that going to accomplish? Okay, maybe some games will be upscaled to 4K and it'll kind of be like the PS4 Pro where games will look better but games will still be able to run on the original Switch. But it's like, why do we need that? It, especially if you already own a Switch, games will look a little bit prettier. But the thing is, like, look, if you play video games for the best graphics and the best resolution, Nintendo is not the right platform for that. It never will be. What sells a Nintendo platform are two things. First of all, the games. Most importantly, the games. The exclusive content that Nintendo offers. Secondly, the actual features of that console. So, for example, the Nintendo Wii had that motion control and all that. And the Nintendo Switch, of course, allows you to play either at home or on the go. Nintendo has never been about graphics. It hasn't been about graphics since, like, the days of the Super Nintendo. So why are we talking about having a more powerful Switch because the Switch Pro will go one of two ways, and either way is not good. Th th there's no way that this thing could possibly succeed, and that's why Nintendo isn't planning on doing it. One thing is, for those graphics whores, an upgrade for the Nintendo Switch, a Switch Pro, is going to be disappointing. I mean, they're gonna have, maybe you could upscale to 4K, maybe games look a little bit better, but in terms of actual performance, it may not actually be that different from an original Switch, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a Switch Pro. And that would be the most likely scenario if Nintendo ever decided to release such a console, an upgraded Switch. Maybe it would have a better battery life on the go. 
maybe games will look a little bit better, but in terms of the actual performance, you're not going to notice much of a difference. So those people who really obsessed about better graphics, they're going to go towards the PlayStation 5 before they buy a Switch Pro. And if Nintendo decides, wait, you do have better performance, you do have games that not only look better, but they run so much better, you're going to have a situation, a repeat of the new 3DS, except maybe even worse, because the Nintendo Switch is really underpowered, since it also markets itself as not only a handheld, because its it specs are a handheld are pretty good, but as a home console, the graphics are not that great. So let's say Nintendo says, okay, we need to address this problem, we need to make the Switch feel more modern, and it needs to be able to keep up with games, so we're going to make it more powerful, you're going to have a situation where games that can't run on the original Switch, but can run the Switch Pro, you're going to have games that are exclusive to the upgraded Switch. Which, with video game consoles, that is an awful idea. Even for handhelds, what they did with the new 3DS, it's a terrible idea. Because over time, you're going to erode that consumer confidence. People who went out and said, yes, I'm going to buy a Nintendo Switch when it comes out, only to be told a few years later, not even like into the new generation, into the next Switch console, or next Nintendo console, rather. They're being told, well, if you want to play all the Switch games, you need to get an upgrade to the new Switch Pro. No, that's awful. Look, I, I predict that in 2023, we're going to get a new Nintendo console, whether it's a Switch 2 or some other type of gimmick that Nintendo's going to have. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. It seems like maybe they might do a, try to do a sequel to the Switch. But if that's the case, three years ain't a long time from now. It really isn't that long that the Nintendo Switch is, is going to fail and that Nintendo desperately needs to make a new console. They desperately needed to make a new console in 2017 because the Wii U had been on life support since about a year after it came out. But I think the Nintendo Switch, without any modifications, without any type of Xbox One X, PlayStation 4 Pro situation, they can keep going with it. The console's doing at least just as good as the Nintendo Wii did, and that console was selling crazy back in the day. Nintendo Switch is also selling very well. There may be concerns because this is a different situation in the sense that Nintendo is releasing their console. They released it halfway in between generations, so maybe around the end of the year, the holiday season, Nintendo can kind of get lost in the shuffle because people are going to maybe stop caring about it, and that is something that I predict will happen. But I think it by no means is enough to justify releasing a more powerful version of a console that can potentially not be able to run games on the older Switch, that's just a terrible idea because you're splitting up the install base and you're really eroding consumer confidence over time. Like, why would I buy your new console next time around if you're just going to pull the same shit like you did with a new 3DS and potentially the Switch Pro? You're going to make my console obsolete in a few years, so why would, I, why would I support you early on? And the other alternative, the most likely scenario if they decided to make this of just making it look a little better with upgraded graphics a little bit, but the performance just being relatively the same, like it's just pointless, completely pointless. So there's no reason to release a Switch Pro model. I think Nintendo holding off on any plans to do so is a great move, and I think they should just be done with new models of the Switch. I think the Switch Lite and the original Switch, they speak for themselves. We don't need new models of the console, and they should just ride it out until 2023 because we're already halfway through the Nintendo Switch's life cycle, right? So it's kind of pointless to mess around with it at this point. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree or disagree with some of the points I've made in the video? Do you think Nintendo should release a Nintendo Switch Pro? And if so, how would you want them to go about it? That's all I got for today. Thank you guys as always for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!